Okay, folks, this is gonna be a big one. After how many years? Huh? I will finally be ranking all of the Mortal Kombat characters from worst to best. And let's just get something straight from the start. We are judging these characters based on lore, their impact on the franchise, potential, design, how the moves looked, how their fatalities looked. We are not talking about gameplay here. You want to know who's the best in tear zoo to use at a tournament? Call that Sonic Fox or something. This is a lore channel. This is not about gameplay. Because at the end of the day, a pro gamer can take any character and make them look good. So we are judging the characters how they came without anyone behind the controller, if that makes sense. I had to make this crystal clear, people. And as far as this list goes, listen, I've been following the lore since Mortal Kombat 3, so I kinda know what I'm talking about. You are not gonna get one of these goofy lists where clearly the person is clueless, where you have something like mocap in front of Master Ball Raicho, they're telling you Striker's the worst, Shijinko's the worst. No, you will get a solid list from me, I promise you. So without further ado, sit back and brace yourselves. Starting from worst to best, number 75, the worst character in Mortal Kombat is Mocap. We get it, meant to be a joke, a tribute, the motion capture guy, but here's the thing, still counts as a character, and if you know he's a joke, why would you then put him above characters that aren't jokes? Characters with actual stories and fatalities. Worst character in the games. Number 74, Meat, another joke character, ha ha ha, funny. Again, took up a slot and if you're listing all characters, you cannot put a joke character over serious characters. Let me break it down for you so you can understand. Mocap's story is he's a motion capture guy. Meat's story is he was a Shang Tsung experiment and he escaped the flesh pits. That is it. Done nothing, accomplished nothing, no real connections to no characters, no original fatalities. Hey, guess what? Su Hao has a better story than that. Cobra's weak ass story is better than that. And they both have fatalities and are connected to a different group. Therefore, as bad as Su Hao and Cobra are, they're actually better than Meat and Mocap. Simple common sense. Number 73, now I've gone back and forth over the years. One minute I wanted Jarek there, Cobra, Su Hao, but we're gonna go with Su Hao for this one. There were only really two things I found decent about Su Hao. I liked the weapon, the fatality, the way they crawled at the end, that was pretty dope. But outside that, character was garbage. On top of that, didn't get the time of day, was killed off in the very game he came in only to be resurrected to be bodied again in his own freaking ending. New timeline killed on a couple of panels. Dude's getting washed off screen, on screen, in your house, my house. For the love of God, stop. We get it, you don't like him, but good grief. I already said all I need to say in the fall and fall of Su Hao. Enough is enough, let that man rest in peace. Do not want to see his head rolling on my screen. I do not need to see another poster. Like, it's overdone now, let it go. Number 72, Cobra. Now while people were fighting demons, elder gods, Cobra was spin kicking convenience store managers in the mouth. The so-called baddest man in his dojo with the shits. But the second he came into the MK universe, got washed. Biggest accomplishment, join the Black Dragon. That's it, after that, fodder. Weak backstory, zero impact, shit, fatalities. This weren't it. Almost got the Suha treatment too, killed off in many endings, and apparently now killed off by freaking Aaron Black, a guy who's a jobber himself. R.I.P. Cobra. Number 71. Jerek. This was just Kano in a different skin, a goofier version of Kano. The only thing I remember different about this guy was that little back bump move. Outside of that, nothing. Dead, dry character. Done nothing, accomplished nothing. At least they tried to improve him in Armageddon, but the damage was already done. Hell even showed up in the comics, but no one would forgive and forget that god-awful Mortal Kombat 4 ending. 
This is the reason why most people remember he actually existed. This is brutality. You can't do it. Wrong, Jarek. This is not a brutality. This is a fatality. Number 70. Kira. Redhead. Big boobs. I guess they thought that was going to be a hit, right? Well, that flopped. Very forgettable character. Weak story. Recycled moves. Shit. Fatalities. Yeah, this weren't it. On top of that, you put her in a dead-end feud with freaking Cobra. A guy who isn't even over himself. <laughs> These two buried each other. Especially in their endings. Cobra devoured her life force and stole the prize, becoming immortal. He felt no shame in his betrayal. Kira was weak. She should have left him dead. That is the Black Dragon way. Number 69, Dairu. Now the story started off decent but then went nowhere. And that's one of the biggest problems. There was no follow-up. Making the character flop. Bland design, laughable moveset, that iron leg shit had me in stitches. I will say this though, I liked that surfboard fatality, especially when he pops off after. But outside of that, come on man, ain't nobody checking for no Dairu. Number 68, Darius, his partner in crime, right? Listen, again, some of these stories, and especially because these guys are from other realms, they're bringing you different aspects. But again, where's the follow-up? Where's the accomplishments? Best thing he ever did was start riots in the Order realm. And according to him, he's a revolutionary and a visionary. <laughs> Seth Rollins is ripping off Darius. Let's go, Darius. But nah, overall, accomplished nothing, did nothing. No memorable moments, no impact. And if you want to play as Blade, listen, Dust off your PS2, put on Tekken 5, and pick Raven. Problem solved. Number 67. Both chameleons. Now, the only thing interesting to me about this is that they were Saurian. We were always told Reptile was alone. Now, to find out that there were two more characters from his race, that's cool. That's an interesting idea. Now, guess what? You two team up and help Reptile. Imagine Reptile being the boss and these two is underlings. Could Reptile actually achieve something now? And I mean, they were obviously cool to play as because the male had all the ninja's moves, the female had all the female's moves. But guess what? Between them, they had like one sentence of lore. Barely any appearances. And the male one had one ending and it came in Armageddon and that ending was non-canon. So these guys have done nothing, accomplished nothing. They were throwaway characters. Number 66, Moloch. Sub-boss. So he had to follow in the footsteps of a Motaro, a Kintaro, Goro. And guess what? Didn't pull it off. Very forgettable boss. I will say this though, his weapon had an interesting backstory. And let's not forget, this guy and Draman jumped Scorpion and defeated him. What? However, what happened after that? Again, follow ups. God bodied like everyone in Armageddon, then they brought him back in the MKX comics only to have his head chopped off by Kitana, then Quan Chi walks in game with that man's head and throws it on the ground like a piece of trash. Buried that Oni. Will we ever see a Moloch again? Nope. Draman. Now his fatality was whack, design was meh, but I actually rock with Draman's backstory. Not bad, this character had potential, but it was never achieved, never realized. With Moloch, got a big win over Scorpion, but then what? Then, like usual, they brought the character back in the new timeline only to get bodied in the MKX comics. Quan Chi killed him. Wasted. Number 64. Oh dear. Oh dear. Chronica. 
Well, she was supposed to be playable, right? <laughs> no, but how does the freaking Titan end up this far up on the list? Let me break it down quickly. Design. Now, when I first saw Chronicle, I didn't think, oh shit, she looks like a badass. Or did I think, oh, that's a cool design. I thought, really? It was meh to me. In game, no real presence. No, <laughs> no memorable lines. She was not good on the mic. Didn't command attention. Not to me anyway. So this is not good. Now, when it comes to her lore, she's one of the most powerful beings ever in the verse. And that's what made it even worse. Here you have a being who's seen, what, millions of timelines. Been there, done that. All seen, all knowing. And is made to look like a complete moron and a jackass two times in a row. Mortal Kombat 11. She's meant to know all the outcomes, all the timelines. Made plenty of mistakes and got done. The DLC comes out, she makes the same damn mistakes again and gets washed even worse. She didn't even put up a fight. She went down quicker than a gold digger at a footballer's house. Pathetic. Worst. MK Boss. And unfortunately, the second worst MK boss is Blaze. And it's not really his fault. He was created by Delia, only just to get washed so someone else can get his power. And we all saw how that turned out, right? The wrong person got his power, resulting in his mission being a complete fail. Had potential, but they'd done nothing with him. And it doesn't help that he's in a verse with fantastic bosses like Shao Kahn, Onaga. Chronica Blaze don't come close. Number 62. Mavado. And we're talking about Red Dragon Mavado, not Dawn Soul Mavado. Okay? I mean, design wise, he looks like he's with the shits. Had like two special moves, his fatality, not gonna lie to you, that was very lame. However, in the story, he actually did a few things, no? What, defeated Cabal, that's huge. Kenshi, put pressure on Kano, so he actually did something. But again, that panned out to nothing. And of course, this is becoming a pattern, brought the guy back in the new timeline, only for him to get bodied by Jackie and Cassie. They jumped that man and opened him up like a can of tuna. Will we ever see Movado again? Probably... Nope. Number 61, Hotaru. Again, bringing something new to the table. He's from a different realm, the Order Realm. He's all about justice. But what did he accomplish? One of his biggest moments is arresting Shijinko. When Shijinko eventually got free, tried to arrest him again, then Shijinko clapped him. Then what? Tried to join Onaga, but then everyone got bodied in Armageddon, so he barely done anything. Had potential, but again, minimal impact. Number 60, Ferritor. And we can appreciate the creativity. You get a Chang and Choi vibe. But unfortunately, just lack luster. This character lacks X Factor, lacks the oomph. No charisma, nothing. Very forgettable. Hardly done anything in the lore. And now apparently dead? Well, that didn't last long. Number 59, Nitara, literally a character with the most potential right here. Her own realm, her own race, unique backstory. Has got all the tools to make it as a <laughs> cool character. Moves were decent, fatality was whack, it was a regular grab. But if you upgrade the character, Nitara can go. She has huge potential. What are you waiting for? Number 58, Kai. Now, just about every time I see Kai on a list, people are shitting on him, saying he's one of the worst characters in the game. Not to me. I see potential. Hear me out, Netherrealm. Take notes. 
You want to bring this guy back? The backstory is already there. Connections to Luke Kang. You can have Raiden mentor him. In Mortal Kombat 4, you were giving him little handstand moves. Bring that guy back and give him Capoeira. I already touched on this. Give him Capoeira, update his moves. Hell, you can give him the lightning staff and the guy can be a hit. It can work. Just remember, look at Fujin. Where nobody checking for Fujin after MK4. MK11 damn near saved that character. It can be done. Number 57, Reiko. Again, after MK4, where nobody checking for no Reiko. Old timeline, this character barely did anything. Damn near forgettable. This character was literally saved by the MKX comics. Best showing in there by a mile. Looked impressive. Fifty six Serena again. She has the look, decent backstory, nice connection with Bihon. They just did nothing with her. You want to talk about characters that need to be fleshed out? Serena has to be in the top five. Definitely needs it. 55 striker and you hear from people he's crap he's one of the worst characters in the game seriously now mk3 that weren't it but mk9 total redemption character design was better moveset was better better fatalities an awesome chapter run and i'm supposed to believe he's one of the worst characters in the game absolutely ridiculous Number 54, probably one of the most criminally underrated characters, Motaro. What can be said? This character is literally remembered for two things, being a tough boss and killing Johnny Cage. That's it. He obviously looks like a badass, has amazing powers, but again, done nothing with him. Wasted. Number 53, Dagon, had a very impressive backstory with Taven. Came across as a badass, but of course you're in an MK verse with superior bosses, so he kind of faded out when compared to the others. But again, the rivalry between him and Taven was good. Number 52, Master Bo Raichou. Again, you're gonna hear crappiest characters in the game. Oh, he sucks. He vomits, he farts, cool. Did you not play MKX? Did you not see the character improve dramatically? Given more personality, witty lines, better fatalities. On top of that, are you gonna ignore his lore? Trained Liu Kang Kung Lao. Survived Shinnok's attack friend to Raiden and he's somehow one of the worst characters in the game a top 10 worst character do you actually play the game or no number 51 tremor he's there because he redeemed himself completely showed up in the worst mk game ever awful then came in mkx with a unique move set nice moves nice fatalities Hell even showed up in the MKX comics and it turns out he was one of the strongest characters there. Definitely the strongest member of the Black Dragon. Him and Cabal. Number 50. Lee Mei. Again, I see potential. She has the backstory. Come on, trained by Shijinko and Master Bo Raicho. That's big, that's good for the character. Nice moveset awesome freaking fatalities i liked all of them but then what and then you turned her into a what <laughs> get out of here with that shit bring Lee Mei back as a fighter the collector aka mumra 
Now, first of all, let's get this perfectly clear. Collector in story mode is trash. This guy literally got on the phone and called Reptile and said, bro, I wanna take your spot, sit this one out. So yeah, he's another glorified jobber in the story mode. Acknowledge. However, I cannot deny this character's creativity. I mean, he's bringing a new race to the table, the Nak Nada is design uh, Mumra called he wants his old look back <laughs> nah but unique moveset unique weapons awesome fatal blow if you didn't play the story mode and you saw collector's fatal blow you think oh damn this guy is with the shits he's a cutthroat killer decent fatalities so outside the story mode good character inside the story mode crap another jobber that gets washed you want to talk about potential Ashra. Come on, the character literally has her own story in the Mortal Kombat universe, doing her own thing on the side. Awesome. Huge potential. Can you imagine if she was updated? It's game over. Honestly, most of these characters that we think lack personality and are crap just need to be updated. Intro dialogues, new fatalities can make a huge difference. Ashra is definitely one of those characters that can return and be successful. But will they make a return? Frost. Now, of course, in the old timeline, was just considered the female Sub-Zero. Barely anything different. Crap in lore, new timeline, definitely an improvement. More creative with our moves, separating her from Sub-Zero. Nice fatal blow, nice fatalities. Looks different. However, in lore, Definitely given a more important role, but the end result is the same. She keeps getting washed, unfortunately. One question though, how do you wash ice, huh? Number 46, Kintaro. Now listen, Kintaro is remembered for two things. Being one of the toughest sub-bosses in Mortal Kombat 2. Two, he burnt Cabal. That is it. Underdeveloped, underutilized. Showed up in the comics only to get his head ripped off by Sonya. Again, this pattern of bringing back old characters only to just have them killed off. Done him dirty. Dropped the ball with Kentaro. Number 45, Kun Jin. Now he's an archer, so they were bringing something new to the table. However, Story-wise, dude came across unlikable, lacked charisma. Now the character's not trash, but at the same time, not impressive either. Number 44, Tonya. Now I rock with Tonya, I never forgot that MK4 ending where she screwed over Liu Kang. Treacherous character. Why is she using cake soap bleach in her skin? Don't ask me. Outside of that, got some witty lines, she's sassy, obviously stuck in the lackey role. But you know what, I rock with Tonya, she's alright. Cetrion, yeah they dropped the ball with Cetrion here. Design is decent, moves suit the character, fatal blow looks hard, fatality is two of the best in the game. That planet fatality is spectacular. That was beautiful. However, done her dirty in the story mode. I mean, she wasn't buried, but they didn't put her over either. Dropped the ball, lackluster. Could have been so much more. Shiva. She didn't do much in the original timeline. Definitely needed that aftermath run. Showed more personality, showed that she's actually with the shits. It was a good little run. MKX Comics became the queen of the Shokan. Yeah, she stepped her game up. Number 41, Jackie Briggs. MKX, a lot of people hated her. Me, I just didn't care for her. But I must say, in MK11, they definitely improved her. She's got a better design. 
Better move set. That fatal blow is one of the best looking fatal blows in the game. Got time on screen to develop with Jax. Definitely an improvement over MKX. To me. Cassie Cage, you probably know by now I was not feeling this appearance in MKX. I thought the character was forced, over pushed and was trying too hard. Horrible booking kind of ruined the character for me. Obviously almost destroyed the entire power scaling in Mortal Kombat X, resulting in the worst ending ever in a Mortal Kombat game. However, again, I will admit, MK11, much better. Like the design better, like the moves better, like the fatalities better, not so forced in the story mode. Overall, I think Cassie Cage is much better in MK11. Or is that just me? Scarlet, definitely a step up from MK9. Character has more of a presence, more fleshed out. Especially with intro dialogues, you learn more about Scarlet. Story mode wasn't all that. I think she had like two fights, got washed, but she blew it out of the park in design, move set fatalities. Character is hard. They done a great job with Scarlet. Aaron Black. Now, Aaron Black, first time he showed up was a breath of fresh air. Okay, brought something new to the table. Decent character, good voice acting, good fatalities, everything on point. However, the same thing with Frost, with Rain. Lore-wise, gets cleaned up, gets washed. Talks a big game, but gets clapped. Just another loudmouth jobber. But even after saying that, you cannot deny that this is one of the best newcomers and a unique, fun new character. Uh-oh, incoming on popular opinion. Now, is Devorah annoying? Yes. Is it good that she's retconned into everyone else's story trying to be inner and extra? No. But is she one of the worst characters in the game? No. People, we are doing this list off a of criteria, not emotion. And if you look at it, Devorah is actually one of the more creative characters in the game. Unique story, unique background, unique fatalities. <laughs> I just have to call it how it is, people. She's not one of the worst characters in the game. Kotal Khan. And you know, a lot of people think I hate Kotal Khan because of two videos I dropped on him. Listen, I do not hate Kotal Khan. I hate how the character is written. Huge difference. I've already said this. Outside story mode, it's a good character. Cool powers, decent special moves, decent fatalities, a good run in the MKX comics. His original story was good. Just stay away from the actual story mode where this guy was buried. That's all. Uh-oh. Unpopular opinion time. Taven. Now what you hear from people is, oh, the character is boring, he's trash. That's it. People don't even go into nothing else, he's just boring. So we're gonna completely ignore this character's lore. Are you aware that Taven has done more than 50 to 60% of the cost? Or no? Mind blowing to me. So you're telling me, this guy took on the Lin Kuei by himself. The Red Dragon by himself, defeated Rain, Fujin, freaking Dark Raiden as one of the best stories in Mortal Kombat and he's one of the worst characters in the game? Yeah, I don't think so. Complete horseshit. Has he got the best design? Nope. Is he the most witty character? Nope. But one of the worst? Far from it. Not over here. Unpopular opinion again? Uh oh, I'm done out here now, right? Shijinko. Again, people say this guy's a top 10 worst character. Again, what are you smoking? What are you drinking? Give me some of that. That must be some good shit. Now, the number one reason people say Shijinko is crap is because he is dumb. He unleashed Onaga on the Mortal Kombat universe. Okay. First of all, it was Reptile who was responsible for Onaga's return. Shijinko was responsible for collecting the Kami Dogu and giving it to him huge difference that most people don't even know so he gave him a ton load of power that is bad agreed 
But did you stop playing the game after you finished Conquest mode? Did you not play through Shujinko's arcade ending to realize that Shujinko defeated Onaga? <laughs> did you not realize the man solved the problem he caused? So let me refresh your memory with the freaking canon ending of Mortal Kombat Deception. So that I would be able to defend myself during the quest to find the Kami Dogu, Onaga had given me the power to absorb the fighting ability of any warrior I encountered, but his gift would prove to be his undoing. The warriors in Outworld were in disarray, heroes were not focused on the true threat of Onaga, and villains were unaware that they were bringing about their own destruction by serving him. I united them, and in one moment, absorbed their combined fighting power. I shattered each of the Kamidogu, the source of his invulnerability. This weakened Onaga, and I attacked him without mercy. His mortal form was no match for a combatant infused with the powers of so many warriors. The Dragon King was finally defeated. The realms will remain as they have since the beginning. So what you see here is, in the end, Shijinko outsmarted Onaga. Wait, what? Yeah. Did you forget that part? And you're gonna turn around and tell me the character you used to play through the best sub-game in Mortal Kombat history. Exploring the universe, joining the Linkway, joining all these factions, getting trained by damn near every character in the game, defeating opponents after opponents, defeated one of the best bosses in Mortal Kombat history. Now you're gonna turn around and tell me this character is one of the worst characters in the game because you think he's dumb and boring? <laughs> Putting someone like Meat and Mocap above him? Sorry, I don't subscribe to that bullshit. Now is Shijinko one of the best characters in the game? Nope. Is he one of the worst? No. That is absurd. This man's lore alone puts him above so many characters. Every damn list you see, Taven and Shijinko are placed bad or shitted on. Not over here. They get their respect over here. I actually enjoyed their lore. Havoc is a character that can steal the show. Awesome backstory, awesome design, has his own realm, so much potential. Blew it out the water in the MKX comics. If this guy shows up in MK12, he damn near might be one of the best characters in the game. Give him a chapter run and watch him jump to top 20. Quanchi. Now you gotta give the man some kind of props. He has done a lot, involved in many storylines. Cool powers. I mean, he looked like a sick head the first time you saw him, right? But however, <laughs> listen, I already touched on all of this in the rise and fall of Quanchi. Deadly Alliance, top of the game. After that, dude fell off. MKX was buried, washed, rinsed, and put out to dry. Very, very bad. Crucified in that game. Rain, come on man, this character is sick. He has all the tools. Good design, good moveset, good fatalities. Just let down by piss poor booking. Here you have a guy who's meant to be a demigod. That's right, correct term, demigod. And he can't win for shit. Cool character, terrible booking in the story mode. Simple as. Number 30, Takeda. Now he's obviously the best of the new kids, the more likable character. Of course, this was mainly down to the fact that he was mentored by Scorpion and his father is Kenshi. So you have the most iconic character in the game mentoring you and one of the coolest characters in the game as your dad. So he definitely got the rub and that made him more likable. Cool looking moves, good design, a decent run in the story mode. Takeda goes hard. Number 29, Giras. I thought Giras was hard. Yeah, dude was a freaking 
Jade Keeper, putting over all the characters, but at the same time he put himself over. This guy was mauling through people left, right and center. Had some epic moments, some strong showings in that story mode. Cool design, decent fatalities. Kiris went hard. He just needs to drop this old Chronicle shit and go off on his ones. Number 28, Sector. Listen, I always thought Sector was a badass. That teleport uppercut, that tracking missile, that was awesome back in the day. Sector has always been a sick character. Only problem is his story mode run. It's awful. Outside that, come on man, it's Sector. Number 27, your favorite, one of the first gatekeepers, one of the first glorified jobbers in the MK-verse, Baraka. You want to get in the MK-verse, holler at Baraka. It laid down for 30 bucks, no problem. Baraka been putting over other characters. Lore-wise, he's always beaten, but then that's pretty much his role at this point. But outside that, unique design, unique character, some of the most brutal fatalities you'll ever see. Finally got a bit of respect in MK11. Come on man, give it up for Baraka. He earned his position. Number 26, Kano. Now as you all know, I've said it a thousand times, story mode Kano is garbage. They have this character losing 99.9% .9 of his matches. But of course, outside that, we're talking about character design, moves, fatalities. Kano is literally iconic at this point. The heart rip fatality is iconic. That fatal blow in MK11 is literally one of the best looking fatal blows in the game. Kano has actually put in work. So yes, yeah, story mode, dude is a glorified jobber. Outside that, a classic character. Number 25. Cyrax, simply an awesome character. First time he showed up with these unique moves, that net, those bombs, let's just say people were blown away. MK9 gave the character a little chapter run, more time to shine, and we learned more about Cyrax, making him even more badass. Awesome character, he's got all the tools. It's good story, good fatalities, good background, Cyrax is the shit. Number 25, Smoke. And people is tough, because considering from like 40 down, not even 40 down, probably 50 down, every character has some good qualities. So it's tough. But Smoke, come on man, that backstory with Sub-Zero is awesome. Cool looking moves, spectacular fatalities, smoke goes in. Or should I just say, smoke is fire. Number 23, Jade. Easily one of the best female characters in the game. Good design, as the guys will tell you. <laughs> cool backstory with Katana, cool powers, cool weapons. Come on man, Jade is obviously a top 5, top 4 female character in Mortal Kombat. Number 22, Cabal. Now the first time I saw Cabal, I thought to myself, who the hell is this? What the hell is this? So his moves, his fatalities, and let's just say I was hooked. Awesome, unique character. Didn't like the way he was portrayed in MK11. I thought they'd done him dirty in the story. That was awful. But outside that, look at his fatal blow. Easily one of the best looking fatal blows in the game. One of the best fatalities in the game. A good run in MK9. Cabal is sick.
number 21 on popular opinion Shinnok now recently most people tell you Shinnok is crap is garbage oh you got beaten by some team kids okay that was awful MKX was the worst ending in Mortal Kombat history this is established okay corrupted Shinnok in fact if you were to ask me where I'd rank corrupted Shinnok it'd be up there with Kronika but let's separate them we cannot ignore what this character did before Research the character, see his origin, what he accomplished, what he has done. Shinnok is far from a crap boss. I don't believe that shit. Number 20, Sindel. Sindel was always cool. You know, the ability to fly the Banshee scream separated her from all the other females. And she's very important in the lore. Now, am I a fan of the new power-hungry Thotiana approach where they are literally telling you this woman killed her husband for more power and a better lover? I guess Jared weren't performing in bed, so she wants to kill him to get piped down by freaking Shao Kahn, a monster? Yeah, kind of gross and disgusting, but each to their own. Outside that, the design is good, the moveset is good, fatalities are good, and let's not forget our epic moment in Mortal Kombat 9. Number 19, Jax. I mean, you get what you see on the tin. He's exactly what he is, a soldier, tough, rugged. Of course, his arms have been getting the wrong end of the stick recently. How many people have taken this guy's arms now? But outside that, impactful on the story, relationships with Sonya, now Jackie, Jax goes hard. Number 18, guess who made the top 20? Reptile. He could have actually been higher if they actually did something with him in the lore. Can you imagine one of Reptile's biggest moments is him being used as a vessel for Onaga. This guy gets bodied in his own endings, gets treated like crap. However, outside that, Reptile is a freaking classic character. Awesome background, awesome design, awesome fatalities. Reptile is the shit. Number 17, Goro. At this point, everyone knows who Goro is. Over the years, he's definitely fallen off a bit, but his past contributions can't be ignored. Goro is iconic at this point. He's a freaking nine-time Mortal Kombat champion, for God's sake. Number 16, 3D Era Stand Up, one of the best bosses in Mortal Kombat history after one freaking game, Onaga. Different levels of power, awesome freaking backstory, Onaga is the Thanos of the Mortal Kombat universe. The only reason I don't place him higher is because the other bosses are more iconic and have been in more games. Remember, he's been in Deception and Armageddon. And Armageddon's story was all over the place. Deception is the only real game where you saw this character get a chance to shine and do his thing. And this is after one game, this kind of impact. Come on, man, you cannot forget that Deception intro. The character is sick. And all I can ask is, if you're going to bring him back, please don't bury the character. Please don't butcher him. Do the character justice. And if you can't, don't bring him back. only one chance left. Raiden's sacrifice was in vain, for the blast had little effect on the Dragon King. Number 15. What? Back-to-back -back 3D era characters? Kenshi, the best 3D era character. Sick backstory, sick moves, sick design, sick fatalities. I do not like how he's handling the story mode, but that can't stop this guy. Put it this way, Kenshi is the coolest character they ever made.
number 14 and i'm calling it now this is the highest you'll see this character on any list and what you hear from people is bland he's boring he's crap <laughs> what people night wolf awesome backstory cool powers MK11 upgraded his moves and fatalities, looking like a boss out here. Awesome run in Mortal Kombat 9. No one can forget that run in that story mode. Good run in Aftermath. The character is sick. The best Native American fighting game character. Move over Julia Chang, T-Hawk, Eagle, Nightwolf is the shit. Number 13, Fujin. Now everyone's gonna say, what? This character has barely been in any games. 100% right. But guess what? This character was literally pulled from the brink of extinction and saved. Mortal Kombat Aftermath saved Fujin. Top three things about Mortal Kombat Aftermath. Fujin has to be one of them. Awesome comeback. Sick story, sick character development, awesome fatalities. Fujin is the shit. And this is living proof that just about any character can be saved with the proper writing and the right booking. Easily the best comeback of a Mortal Kombat character that was counted out. Period. Number 12, Ermac. Just the concept of Ermac is cool. In fact, name one thing bad about Ermac. Start there. Literally the only bad thing you can say about Ermac if you want to find a fault is that he is booked horribly. One minute the guy's powerful as hell, the next minute he's fodder when he's meant to be one of the strongest characters in the game. That is the issue with Ermac. Outside of that, Good backstory, cool design, good fatalities. Ermac is obviously one of the best characters in Mortal Kombat. Period. Number 11. Noob freaking Cybot. Yes, we acknowledge this guy has won nothing in the new timeline. He's a glorified jobber. Got you. But are we going to ignore everything else? Nope. Sick design. Easily always had some of the best fatalities in any game. Awesome backstory. People, this is the original Sub-Zero. Bihan. You know what Bihan has done in the past. He has to get his respect. Finally made it to the top 10. Wow. And we're still going. Obviously every character here is iconic and classic. Number 10, Sonya Blade. Now do I always pick Sonya? Do I even use her? Not really. But again, she was the first female in the game. Iconic at this point. Has connections to various characters. Tons of different stories, Sonya been put in the work. This can't be denied. Number 9, Shang Tsung. What needs to be said here? This guy has transcended the game. First boss in Mortal Kombat, iconic. His soul stealing is iconic. If you say the name Shang Tsung, everyone on the planet knows who that is. Probably had his best showing in Mortal Kombat Aftermath. Listen, Shang Tsung. One of the best villains in fighting games. Period. Number 8. Now this character is disrespected just about by everyone. No one really gives him his props. You get your props here. I'll give you your props. Number eight, Kung Lao. 
This character always had some of the best fatalities in the game. Slick moves. Look at his fatal blow in MK11. Dude is on a different level. Different level of swag. Huge connections in the story. Has done a lot in lore. Kung Lao is a top 10 Mortal Kombat character. I don't care what anyone says. Number seven, Melina. Now, Melina is a roller coaster of emotions. This character is all over the place. You see her ups, you see her downs. Came a long way. Easily one of the most popular characters in the game. Connections to Kitana, Shao Kahn. Problem is, she gets jobbed out all the time. But again, her impact can't be denied. Easily has one of the best voice actors ever. Brutal fatalities, sick character. Now, is she over-sexualized? I mean, yeah, but have you seen Dead or Alive? <laughs> Number six, Johnny freaking Cage. It's a given, top 10 character. We have seen this man grow from a joke, a jobber to a main eventer. Top tier now, right? Earned his spot, put in the work, witty lines, cool fatalities, sick character. Everyone in the top 10 is iconic. Johnny Cage is iconic at this point. Number five, Kitana. Let's just call a spade a spade. The number one female in the game. Easily one of the more important characters in the entire verse. Connections with a ton load of different characters. You've seen this woman go through hell and back. This is a classic character right here. Number four, Shao Kahn. Let me make this simple. Shao Kahn is the best boss in fighting games. Full stop. Shao Kahn's name rings bells. His look is iconic, his hammer is iconic, his speeches are iconic. This guy is literally more popular than 90% of the cast. Shao Kahn has put in work in the realms, he has put in work in the lore. Hell, Shao Kahn has put in work behind the announcer's desk. <laughs> Shao Kahn, people, it's Shao Kahn. Top three, oh dear. Number three. The God of Thunder, Raiden. Like, what needs to be said? Who doesn't know who Raiden is? Huh? This is literally one of the most iconic characters ever. Raiden has been there, done that, saved Earthrealm many times, literally has the most wins in the game. I didn't really like the fact that they were trying to make this character look stupid and competent when this guy's meant to be one of the wisest characters in the game. But at this point, it doesn't even matter. You will rarely find a more iconic character than Raiden in Mortal Kombat or fighting games in general. Period. Number two, the uncrowned face of Mortal Kombat. Obviously, Lu freaking Kang. Listen, you do a list talking about the best Mortal Kombat characters based on impact and lore, and Liu Kang's not in your top three, then you are clueless. This man has done it all. Saved Earthrealm plenty of times. Awesome character. Did not like the whole killing him off. That zombie shit was trash. That Revenant shit was garbage. 
Luckily for them, they saved him in Mortal Kombat 11. Back to prominence, Liu Kang is one of the best fighting game characters ever created. Legendary Dragon, Legendary Bicycle Kick, Liu Kang is that guy. And the number one position goes to Sub-Zero and Scorpion. Now I know everyone just gives it to Scorpion, but the way I see it is yin and yang. It takes two to tango. If Sub-Zero was feuding with Darius, ain't nobody checking for Sub-Zero. If Scorpion was feuding with freaking Cobra, ain't no one checking for Scorpion. It took the two of them. Their rivalry got shit popping. And while we're at it, shout outs to Bihon, aka Noob, because he helped too. He's the first one that got shit popping. Their classic rivalry put Mortal Kombat on the map. Both men deserve credit. Both characters have transcended the game. Classic fatalities, classic moveset, classic costumes. Scorpion and Sub-Zero are two of the best fighting game characters ever made. Point blank period.